Hi, I'm on today with George Lee, and uh, I met George uh, probably about a year ago now in at the Las Vegas Traders Expo, and we we went for dinner um, with uh, Gil Morales and Dr. Chris Kasher, um, Jeffrey Scott, and uh, Fred Richards. Uh, we, we all had dinner at uh, Joe's Stone Crab in Caesar's, Caesar's Palace, and uh, since then I have. Uh, I uh, met George at the High Growth Stock Investor Seminar where we were both presenting and after listening to George's presentation I was really interested in the uh, success he was having with uh, with his trading and so we got together to produce some templates for EdgeRater to allow people to do scans, run scans um, that George himself uses for uh, for looking for stocks that are breaking out from uh, squeezes and uh, I'll, I'll let George explain a bit more about uh, about that but what we're going to do today is go through the templates that have just been released and look at a few charts and George is just going to explain what he sees in the chart and uh, um, give you a flavor for how he, he goes about uh, trading so let's get started uh, hi George hi Chris and uh, George, I'm just showing on my screen. Can you see my screen? I can see your screen. Yeah. Okay, great. What I've what I've done is I've already run a uh, a scan for daily signals, and I ran this on my list of uh, all securities. So there's there's uh, around seven thousand eight hundred securities uh, in my list, and the date is the twenty seventh of uh, September. So this was end of day data up till last Friday. And uh, I ran this just now, and the template uh, produced this rich set of information here, and it's broken down in in the the various columns. And uh, um, I don't know if I want to explain too much about these columns before you get into in, into what you look for. But in general, the way it's broken down is that uh, we have uh, daily squeezes. Uh, if the squeeze is on then there's a green true in the in the first column here and then it will tell you the length of the squeeze in terms of number of bars it will tell you if there are any breakouts within a squeeze or breakdowns within a squeeze and then the columns to the right of that the moving average the uh, the PSR MOBO pocket pivot and Keltner channel are just columns that are used um, as additional information and also these columns go into calculating the values for for uh, for these set uh, columns, sets of columns here. So, um, did you want to take a look at some of the charts here? Um, well, we'll look at some charts later, but maybe I should just basically try and explain how I trade and what sort of methodology I use. I mean, there's quite a few things that I do, but I would say the two major ones that I trade off of are basically looking for um, breakouts from very low volatility so you get some very explosive moves when when things are basing and they they um, have a, a squeeze set up and then the other thing that I look at is I just look at high growth stocks and I'm looking for opportunities to get into them so I would say that's a continuation type play so again I look for certain patterns on the continuation so I look at stocks that are hitting new 52 week highs and then I'm waiting for pullbacks on them so I wait for them to form flags or cup and handles or those types of patterns so again I think what Chris has done is he's set up a, a tremendous template here that shows you um, things that are consolidating and then um, the squeeze to me is a setup is so it, when you see a squeeze you don't necessarily buy it right away um, you wait for a trigger and and so the triggers that I use for for getting into trades are the ones that Chris has put on his template there so you can see things like the parabolic support and uh, reverse that's PSAR um, he's got um, moves above the Keltner channel he's got I think you've got pocket pivots on there as well yeah, so I, I want want to see breakouts from low volatility with unusual volume so the pocket pivot identifies when you're likely to get institutional or or insider buying coming into a stock so 
again, um, we never know enough about what um, is happening in a company. Usually the people that know that are the institutions and, and the insiders. And so they know a lot more about a stock than we do. So what we're looking for is we're looking for their activity in the stock to, to and we want to follow on their coattails and get along on them. Okay, so um, again, on the preamble that Chris has given about about what I've been doing, um, you, you'll see that there's a number of stocks that I've um, featured this year. I, I also work with a company called Magenta Software, and, and they're a seasonality-based software. And um, one of the things that I do is I do these webinars um, usually twice a month, and I, I feature stocks. So you can see in the list there a number of stocks that have featured that have gone up well over 100%. So I was talking about the solars back in uh, December of 2012, and several of them have had tremendous runs. So two of the ones that I talked about were Jinko Solar and SunPower, and they've gone from about $5 up to $25. So, you know, they've had a significant run. Talked about Netflix as well. And, and all these stocks were basically consolidating or coming through squeezes. So, so we'll show you some charts of those and you can see how they've taken off. And recently I've been in two other solars that came out of daily squeezes and I'm going to have Chris show you the chart. Do, do you want to do that right now, Chris? Yeah. Can look at those two charts. That sounds good. So if you have the symbol, I just, uh, for people who don't know, you can, if you are on the spreadsheet, you can press uh, control F for find and it will pop up a, uh, a, a dialogue where you can type the symbol name in. So if you give me the symbol name for uh, any of those stocks. Okay, so one of the ones was Jinko Solar, that's JKS, and again, this was a stock that I recommended back in December of last year when it was trading a around $5, and, and currently it's well over $20, and it just had a daily squeeze recently. So you'll see from the chart that you can identify weekly and daily and, and monthly squeezes. Okay, so here's the chart of JKS. Whereabouts on the chart uh, should we be looking? Okay, and you can see just recently um, the last daily squeeze you have there. That's when I re-entered the position on it. Right. So the way let me just explain the the way the chart is laid out. This chart is is one of the layouts, one of the new layouts that was added as part of this uh, this update. So if you click on the layouts uh, tab and you come down to George Lee layouts, you can just click on GL squeeze. And that has all of the uh, the indicators um, already included, so you don't need to set up your own chart if you if you want to look at, at this particular chart. Um, so what it's showing is, let me just collapse this uh, side down to give us more area here. What it's showing is when George was talking about, you can see the squeeze was on. Well, the highlighted area between these two bands is the actual squeeze. So whenever you see um, this shaded area here between two bands, that means the squeeze is, is on. The, uh, the, the PSAR or parabolic stop and reverse that uh, George was talking about is indicated by the, uh, the circle circles that are either below or above price. And what else you can see on the chart is the, uh, the um, purplish shaded area in the middle which are your modified Bollinger Bands or, or uh, MOBO uh, bands. Uh, and the yellow line on here is the 50 um, period moving average and then below the chart there are three areas one showing you the daily squeeze one the weekly squeeze and one the monthly squeeze um, so uh, yeah, sorry, sorry to uh, jump in there but uh, uh, carry on okay so um, I've been into JKS recently um, twice so I did have an entry back in August and that was when it came out of a daily squeeze and it took out a previous swing high. Okay, and then I got in again. I got stopped out because I used the PSAR for my stops. I got stopped out and then there wasn't a squeeze after that, but um, it did go through the PSAR and I got in around $19 and it's currently trading at, as I speak, at twenty two sixty. dollars So, so it, it's had a reasonable run again. Um, so the other stock that I was in, and, and again, um, every week I look at the 
best performing stocks of the week in, in the past week um, from the 23rd to the 27th. Um, the two solars that I'm currently in were one of the best performing stocks on the week. So the other solar stock is Trina Solar, and that's TSL. So Chris is going to bring up Trina Solar. Yeah, I can see it on my screen. It might take a while to come through to your uh, your your computer. Okay. And again, Trina Solar broke out of a daily squeeze, and that was back in August. And again, that's when I first entered it. Okay, I used the PSAR as as a stop, so I got stopped out. And then I almost immediately got back in again on it. And my entry was around $12.15. And as of this moment, it's at $15.49. So again, it's gone up about $3 on a $12 stock. So it's up about 25%. Chris, is it showing TSL? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I can see it there now. Okay. Can you see yeah. it? Yeah, so you can see the daily squeeze. So that's where I entered. Can you can you zero in on that a little closer and show sure. the PSAR? Let's just uh, zoom in to. Uh, okay, so we're looking at August the eighth. Uh, right now, that's where my cursor is. So yeah, this is the whole squeeze that was in August, and the PSAR, the the, the circles that are below and above. Yeah, so again, it started to break out. So you, you basically had a little um, cup that it formed at the early part of August, and then it formed a second cup, and the second cup was higher. And I was showing Chris how you look for those base-on-base -base type formations. And so when you take out the swing high of that um, in August there, that's where your entry is from the the squeeze and and when that happens you can see you also had a, a huge influx of volume so again that was my entry bar although I didn't get in at the end of the bar I got in earlier because I had a buy stop on it okay and I use buy stops quite a bit and George did did you uh, can you see my cursor where it is right now on the the 20th of yep. August so that would be the bar that, at that time it's still in the daily squeeze um, yep. the volume and is still high there yeah, and you did get a pocket pivot signature coming in, but you hadn't taken out that swing high. So until you take out the swing high, you 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 wait. Right. So at that point, it would have made it to your watch list, and then the following day, you would have entered using. Yeah. So so again, I just have a buy stop above the swing high, and it, it enters on the swing high. It was about eight nineteen, something like that. Yep. Okay, and then um, after that, I just use the PSAR and I use the 10 EMA. So I don't want to get into too much detail about um, just exiting trades, but basically I, I use a PSAR. I use the daily 10 EMA to, to monitor, and, and so it's just basically kept going up from there. Okay, and then I use the PSAR to re-enter um, recently. So I'm, there wasn't a daily squeeze on my recent entry, but again... Uh, I'm back in it again. Yeah, it looks like on uh, the 24th of September, it, yeah. it crossed the PSAR. Yep. And again, that was entry was around $12.15, I think. So again, it's gone from about an $8 stock up to a $15 stock in a very short period of time. And again, the solars have been a good place to be this year. So last year we were looking at... Um, the sectors that were strong and one of the sectors that was very strong last year was the home builders this year it's been solars and and shippers and and stocks like that so um the next thing i wanted to do was just look at a few other stocks i've traded so i've also been trading um some of the healthcare stocks and so um chris can you look at acadia pharmaceuticals acad yep just uh one sec Um, yeah, it's uh, showing on my screen. Okay, so Acadia Pharmaceuticals is, whenever I do scans, it's been the best performing stock of the year. It's well up over a thousand percent for the year. 
And again, it's just finding good opportunities to get back into it. Okay, so it did come out of a monthly squeeze at the start. So I don't know if you can create a monthly chart there, but you can see that we did have a... I can bring monthlies up, but monthlies are... Um, and I sh this is something people should be aware of, is that in order to get monthly squeeze data, you have to have uh, a fair amount of historical data because uh, you can't start producing a squeeze until you have at least 20 bars worth of data. So you need at least, um, you know, probably two years worth of data in order to get monthly squeezes. I normally, when I run my scans, I normally only fetch the, the last two years worth of data. So in order to see a, a true monthly squeeze on here, you'd, you'd have to um, update your list with probably you know, four or five years worth of data. So uh, we don't have that right now, but it's possible for people to uh, to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyway, ACAD, Acadia Pharmaceuticals, came out of a monthly squeeze. And when it did come out of a monthly squeeze, it broke through the PSAR. It was around $3, and currently today it's at $28. So it's had about a ninefold return on investment if you'd bought it then. Okay, now recently it came out of a daily squeeze. And that's when I was buying it, and that was around the twenty-one dollar level. So um, the swing high there was just over twenty-one, so about twenty-one fifty. So I've been in the stock now since about twenty-one fifty. So again, um, it set up another base on base type pattern, um, broke above the previous swing high around twenty-one fifty, and uh, today it's at twenty-eight dollars. So it's up about $6.50 on a $21 stock. So it's up almost 30% um, from where I bought it. Now, again, if you look at a weekly chart of, of Acadia, um, you'll see it stayed above the weekly PSAR. So... Um, the weekly chart's been very strong. It stayed above its 10. It stayed above the PSAR. So if you'd gotten in back around the $3 level, there hasn't been any reason to get out since then. And and actually, off the $3 level, you had this big volume bar here in the, the wide range. Yeah, so it broke out with that big volume. So you had a big pocket pivot, big breakout there. And again, there was a monthly squeeze at the time that that happened. And um, it's never looked back since. Okay, um, another stock that we looked at was Beat, um, B E A T. Again, so this is in the healthcare sector. Okay, let me bring that chart into view. There we go. And again, I don't know if it shows the monthly squeeze, but there was a monthly squeeze. Yeah, on here it's showing the monthly squeeze ended around um, June, the end of June. Right. And again, this is a stock that's more than doubled since it broke out from its monthly squeeze. And let me see if I switch the chart over to monthly, see if that, um, see what you can see there. Yeah, I don't have that many monthly bars on here, but um... anyway, it broke through a PSAR level around two dollars. So again, um, if you don't have a scan under two dollars, you might have missed this. But again, it did have a squeeze. It's gone from two dollars and it's currently sitting at nine ninety five. So it's up about five times what you would have paid for it. But again, it's got a type of pattern that I look for quite consistently which is basically a stock that's been pretty beaten up and then it starts to base out and then you, you start seeing some volume coming in and again if you look at the monthly bars you can see there was huge volume coming in just a few months ago um, if you look at the weekly chart on it the same thing you'll see that there was a huge volume spike on it yeah. and then it started to break out so it, it was in a weekly squeeze it didn't fire out of the weekly squeeze but you did get a PSAR and previous swing high breakouts. So, yeah, can you see my chart 
there, George? I can see it. Yes. So this, uh, where I'm, where my cursor is right now, that that's the uh, the weekly squeeze ending. Yeah. And um, it looks like a, a fairly large volume buy. It looks like it 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 broke out maybe the week after the squeeze ended, potentially then. Yeah, it was actually a few weeks after the squeeze, but you don't get volume coming in until just before that huge volume bar. So there was this uh, pocket pivot the week before that, and then that week of the huge volume bar, there was a huge volume breakout, and it's continued on since then. Right. So even after the squeeze has ended, it, it's probably worth paying attention to these things because um, <clears throat> you might get you might get pocket pivots or. Uh, Kelton channel breakouts, um, you know, a week or uh, several bars after the the squeeze has ended. Is that is that true? That's true. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe we just feature two s stocks that um, we've traded recently, and again, one of them was um, Fab Universal. So that's F U. And again, it came out of a daily squeeze. So again, when we were doing our scans, we found um, FU. Um, my entry was at five dollars and seven cents, and on the first run, I wound up selling at about eight dollars and twenty cents, and eight dollars and thirty-five cents. Got back into it again, and I wound up selling it at ten dollars and fifty cents. So I basically, in about a week and a bit, um, I've got a double out of it and it came out of a daily squeeze okay I just <laughs> while you were talking there I was just searching for the chart so I'm looking the, I can see the chart now okay and you can see the daily squeeze in there down here yep yep and it ended uh, looks like on the Thursday the 18th of July Oh, yep. and, that, and then there's there's been a couple since then. The the most recent ones are these these two um, down here. The last one ending on the sixteenth of September. Yeah. So again, um, one of the signals we look for coming out of squeezes is a mobile buy signal, and and um, I'll just try and explain mobile. Um, David Elliott created um, these modified Bollinger bands. And the modified Bollinger Bands basically have a shorter look-back period than the normal Bollinger Band. No normal Bollinger Band, the look-back's 20 bars. And on uh, uh, Bobo, it's a 10-bar look-back. And the normal range on Bollinger's is two standard deviations. And David Elliott um, shrunk that down to 0.8 standard deviations. So, ag again, when you get a mobile buy signal in a squeeze it's usually quite powerful so that was the trigger that basically alerted us to this stock and again I featured this um, a few weekends ago I think it was on September the 15th so it had already happened you can see that the breakout bar came on the 13th so I missed it on the 13th and got most of the people into it on the um, following Monday so that was the 16th and again on the 16th it went from just over five dollars up to um, the eight dollar level um, it had a quite a um, significant pullback okay so it was quite volatile and then it, it proceeded to go up to eleven dollars and and forty eight cents so uh, again I was in on the first run and the second run and again I got a double out of that Okay, so again, you can see the power of, of combining some of these triggers with the setup, which is which is the low volatility. And again, I think Chris has done a great job of of um, mapping out all the different things that that you may want to use as triggers. So the squeeze is a setup, and the triggers are things like the PSAR, the mobile buy, and um, he also uses his Keltner channel breakouts as well. Okay, and then another stock that we featured recently was um, CUR. It's another healthcare stock, and again, CUR was one of the best performing stocks for the month of September. 
So we'll just look at that as well. And again, CUR was in um, a monthly, a weekly, and a daily squeeze, and it broke out of the daily squeeze. Yeah, <clears throat> we see the break, the daily squeeze ended on the th uh, August the thirtieth, and the monthly squeeze at that point is was still on. The weekly squeeze, it's showing on here that it's. It was the last weekly squeeze was back in um, Ju uh, June. Okay, so again, I do scans for um, mobile breakouts from squeezes, and I, I, again, I have a list of things that are in squeezes. So again, I think it was on September the sixth that that I got a mobile buy signal on on CUR. So we had um, sent this out as well to, I think I sent out an alert on this. So it had a huge volume signature. So um, the volume had gone up quite significantly. It had a mobile buy signal and the mobile buy signal followed a mobile sell signal. So quite often when you get a sell and a buy almost back to back, um, it becomes a buy signal. So we got into this stock around $2 and it, very quickly went from two dollars up to three dollars. So mm -hmm. again, I sent that out to the people in my Web ninety nine, and and quite a few of them were able to have a nice little profit on that. So a eighty cent move on a two dollar and twenty cent stock is significant. Mm -hmm. And that breakout there um, also crossed above the uh, the previous swing previous high. Swing high, yeah. 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 Yeah, and it did it with volume. So again, if you look at the volume signature, you can see there was quite a lot of volume that came in when when it did break out. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll just look at again, as I said, the main sectors that we've been watching that have done well this year have been the solars and the um, the healthcare stocks. But one other sector that was pretty beaten up that's done well recently is is the um, shippers. Okay, so we're going to just look at some of the shippers. So we looked at um, some solar stocks and we looked at some healthcare stocks. Now we're just going to look at a few shippers that have done well and that have come out of squeezes. So we're going to look at Eagle Bulk Shipping, which is EGLE. And again, this stock came out of a weekly squeeze. Yep, see the weekly squeeze ended um, right there on 13th of September. Yeah, and that's because it fired long. Okay, and so it had a weekly breakout from about $5.10, and it went up to eight seventy five. dollars um, Now, I, I have... Uh, a sixty percent rule that I follow, and I I learned this from a fellow named Jesse Stein, who has a book and a website, and he's been trading the shippers as well. So it was interesting that we both picked up um, some of these shipping stocks about the same time. So I had recommended Dry Ships and Jenko Shipping, and um, he had recommended this Eagle Bulk Shipping as well. So again, I missed the first move that it had. But the second move, I was waiting for it. And again, it set up a weekly squeeze, which is um, fairly significant. Chris, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah, your screen just went blank. Um, okay. It's uh, <clears throat> probably a uh, internet problem here because I still see the screen. Hopefully, it's still on the, on the video. Okay. Okay. Anyway, I was just talking about Jesse Stein. And, and one of the things that he teaches is, is what he calls a 60% rule. The 60% rule is quite simply when the stock price starts going parabolic, you want to get out of it at 60% above the um, 10 moving average. So in Eagle Bulk Shipping's case, it started looking parabolic 
and the 10 EMA was at $5.25. So if you multiply that by 1.6, you get a reading of 840. So 840 was my target on this stock. So I got in at $5 and I wound up selling it at $8.40. So I'm not currently in EGLE except for a few shares. And today it, it gapped down. And so I'm I've, I've still up on the shares that I bought. It still hasn't gone through its PSAR on the weekly um, and it's testing its PSAR on the daily but it is below its its previous highs by quite a ways so it did have a fairly significant drop today um, I also use that 60% rule on CUR and I use that 60% rule on, on Fab Universal FU and the other shippers we'll look at is dry ships. It's D R Y S. Dry ships also came out of a squeeze, and it was a weekly and daily squeeze. Yeah, so I'm looking at the the daily squeeze ended before the weekly squeeze. That kind of makes sense. Um, around about daily squeeze ended the August the twenty third. Yeah, so it's just getting some sort of signal that gets you into the trade. Do you have any rules for selling um, if it doesn't move as expected in the in the direction? Um, well, I I have a a few bar rules, like a four bar rule on some some things. So if it doesn't start going in the direction that I expect to, quite often I'll sell. But um, most of the time you'll get a volume thrust so you can see on the daily squeeze you got a mobile buy signal through PSAR mm -hmm. and that was around $2.20 um, yep. so my initial entry was there at two twenty, and it hasn't broken any of the rules so far but in terms of selling I think it just broke the PSAR today so um, it looks like my stop would be taken out. I haven't looked at my account, but my PSAR was around 360, and today the PSAR took out, got taken out on the daily. Mm -hmm. And we should be able to see the PSAR if we look at the uh, <clears throat> we look at the template. The value of PSAR 362. So that's probably where your uh, so yeah. So I think the PSAR on that's where my stop would have been. It was at 360. So again, I'm not looking at my account right now, but that's approximately where my PSAR stop would have been, and that got taken out today, I believe. Um, my screen keeps breaking up now, so I'm not able to see a lot of things that are going on. Anyway, you know, that's a fairly decent move. It went from $2.20 up to $3.60. So that's a $1.40 move on a 220 stock and so that's over 60 percent so that's not not bad okay so um hopefully we've demonstrated um a few charts on the squeeze um do you want to look at one other stock this is an inexpensive stock so one of the questions people always say is um i have a very small account are there any stocks i can trade that um are inexpensive so I do do scans for inexpensive stocks a lot of the stocks that trade are more expensive I would say for the longest time I was looking for stocks that were over five and ten dollars because um, typically institutions won't touch stocks that are under five dollars or under ten dollars depending on their mandate um, but I, after reading um, Mark Minervini's book and Jesse Stein's book they traded a lot of stocks that were pretty inexpensive and one of the things they said was that um, a lot of analysts don't follow the inexpensive stocks, so it gives you an edge. And so any time that you can get an edge in your trading, um, it's significant. So, so again, um, just looking at dry ships again, it did come out of a monthly squeeze. It did come out of a weekly squeeze, and it did come out of a daily squeeze. Did you have an inexpensive stock you wanted to highlight? Yeah, so I'm just going to look at Geron. It's G-E-R-N. 
And again, I can't see anything on my screen anymore, so <laughs> okay. I'm sort of in the dark here. <laughs> I'll, but, I'll let you know what's going on. Hang on. Right. But Geron came out of a daily squeeze and it had quite a significant move, so. Okay, we're looking at uh, G E R N right now, and uh, we're looking at daily squeeze. There's a fairly lengthy daily squeeze in May, um, ended June 25th around that time. Uh, since then, it's had a couple of daily squeezes that haven't really been that long. Uh, there's like been one two bar squeeze and one one bar squeeze. The one bar squeeze actually seemed to be a, gr a great entry point if you were able to get in there. Mm -hmm. And that was on 9 9, September 9th. September 9th, yeah. Yeah, so um, without looking at the chart, I can't really make any sort of <laughs> commentary on it. But again, as I said, there's there's quite a few inexpensive stocks that we've been able to find. And um, some of them have had some just unbelievable rule moves. And so you can see Acadia Pharmaceuticals has gone from $3 level up to $27. And, and so we're looking to find stocks like this, stocks that have been beaten up and that have um, had good breakouts from there. So not every squeeze is successful, but again, we try and just use a, a very rule-based approach to these. So we look for um, mobile breakouts from squeezes. We look for PSAR. So those are the main triggers that I use when, when I get into a chart. And I want to see some sort of optimism. So I want to see something either starting to base out and then start to break or I want to see something that's been in an uptrend like the solars. So Trina Solar and, and Jinko Solar were already in uptrends, and then they had a squeeze formation form. So again, those would be um, also considered continuation-type moves. So again, the squeezes happen more in, in basing patterns. Continuation patterns don't always produce um, squeezes before they break out. And I think um, I've talked to Chris, and I think he's also interested in looking at some continuation plays and a template for that as well. So that could be in the works. Yeah, I I no think. <laughs> well, I think that uh, this template uh, or this set of templates for for this month has uh, has come out very well, and uh, I think it's worth continuing on along this theme. So probably probably continue to work with you uh, this coming month and we also have the the seminar coming up right um, in on the 17th of October and that's going to be in near Santa Ana in California right is it possible for anybody to attend that or do they have to be part of a part of the um, no it's it's open so it, it's an open workshop I, th I think it starts on the 18th which is the Friday okay because um it's the 18th, the Friday, the 19th, the Saturday, and the 20th, the Sunday. So again, we'll go into more detail into just entries and exits and just rules for entries and exits. But again, as I said, the squeeze is a setup, and the triggers usually are I use are PSAR, um, previous swing highs, and um, mobile buy signals. And, and Chris is very... Um, He's he's done a terrific job here, I think, creating this template that shows you the, the triggers and shows you the setup. So and then you just have to scroll through the stocks that, that come up on the, the scan and, and just find something that looks like uh, buyers are starting to jump in, that there is some volume in there. Um and once you see those volume thrusts it you get some tremendous moves on some of these stocks. Mm-hmm. That's great. Um, and I will put a link to all of the various things we've talked about. Um, if you're in the template, you're running the template, and you click on Template Info, that will take you to a web page on the, on the blog, which will give you more information about, about what we've talked about. I'll also put a link on there to the uh, seminar in uh, Santa Ana. Also, there's a, the High Growth Stock Investor Seminar coming up a week after that with uh, Ian and Ron. And uh, George will be there too, and I'll be there too, um, presenting. So uh, if anyone's interested in going to that, I'll put a link on the site. Um, and then the other thing is, 
there's the Las Vegas Traders Expo in November and just prior to that there's the Magenta uh, Trader Seminar too so I'll put a link onto that I, I'm going to be presenting there, George will be there too and uh, three days of, uh, of other um, presenters and uh, some good information there so I'll put all that in the link just click on the click on the button up here and that'll be on the on the blog page right and if you are interested in the magenta they have a website it's magentatrader.com and I know like myself and Chris we focus more on high growth stocks um, there'll be another fellow there Vicente that does Forex um, Sue McLaren is primarily focused on MACD divergences and she does more short term trading and then um, Dr. Jeff Scott will also be there and Jeff Scott is, is um, affiliated with high growth stock and he also is a high growth stock um, bias so so Chris and, and myself and, and Jeff will be talking about high growth stocks um, and Derek Pilger the fellow that um, is the chairman of, of Magenta Trader. He'll talk a lot about seasonality. So Magenta Software is a seasonality software. So if you're interested in that, you can go to their website. Yeah, that sounds like a, a very good, varied uh, um, seminar there. And also, it's just prior to the Las Vegas Traders Expo. So if you stick around after... So you stick around and pick up some more information at the Traders Expo. Um, can I just talk about the... Los Angeles workshop the Co yeah. on in Costa Mesa. So I will be there. Chris will be there. Um, Jeff Scott will also be there. And I think we're lucky enough that we've got Gil Morales coming. And Gil worked with William O'Neill. So he'll probably talk about pocket pivots or um, Bible gaps. The other person will be there is, is Ian Woodward. And Ian works with uh, High Growth Stock. So he's also going to do a presentation. So I, the focus on our October workshop will be just on high growth stocks. So we may talk a little bit about options trades, but again, the, the focus will primarily be on, on uh, what you've been seeing with um, the Edge Raider software, which is um, growth stocks. Okay, great. All right, I think that uh, that, that, that wraps it up quite nicely. Um, th thank you for your time today Josh okay well thank thank you for creating such a incredible tool I, I think um, people are gonna find it very um, profitable and and um, easy to use so uh, I'm really impressed with what you've done Chris that's great all right well thanks a lot and uh, we'll, we'll talk to you soon great thank you okay bye-bye